Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to What on Earth is Happening here on RBN. I'm your host, Mark Passio. My website, whatonearthishappening.com. We're taking your calls till the end of the show this evening. Let's go to another caller and hear from Zach in Chicago. Zach, you're live on What on Earth is Happening. Welcome. Hi, it's good to talk to you again, Mark. Thank you. I uh, I heard the little jab the last caller said. He was like, well, you wouldn't be saying that if you were in handcuffs. And even though I would have liked to hear what he had to say, you were completely right that he is still stuck because of that little jab. It just goes to show that he's just like intimidation once so, again. So few people are ever going to come out of a cult mentality because, as I said, they can't admit that they've been duped. I often think about how many people who were involved in Satanism at the level I was involved in it with will probably ne- hardly ever, if ever, come out and expose it and talk about it because they stay in that mindset for life. Most people can't ever break out of that mindset in multiple lifetimes. You know, they, it's too painful for them to admit that they were wrong and duped. This is part of the problem when it comes to the dynamics of people who are supporters of order followers. You know, they don't want to admit that they've been duped into an ideology and supporting something that is ultimately evil and ultimately destructive of human freedom. You know, these people don't even understand. They're not only enslaving other people, they're enslaving themselves and they're enslaving their own family members simultaneously. They don't get it. Even if he thinks he's, you know, trying to uphold natural law, he's still driving around in a vehicle that's been provided by the state, just, you know, intimidating people. Well, let's so. put it this way. How could anybody possibly uphold natural law if they are a believer in authority and following other people's orders? It doesn't even make any logical sense. That that statement makes, abs- there's, it's totally inconsistent with itself. You know, uh, you can't possibly be upholding natural law if you're following orders and you believe in authority, which is what the state is, period. You know? I agree completely. And I have just a few things I'd like to uh, bring up to you. Sure. Talking about natural law. Um, In this day and age, you know, there's a lot of things we could focus on. And uh, and I love all your work, and I've kind of realized that the three most important things, at least from what I have found, is the understanding of natural law, the real holy trinity, and the trivium. And that's right. Kind of like a ninefold system, um, where like you have to categorize your thoughts, emotions, and actions into the grammar stage. Right. And you have to logically process all your thoughts, emotions, and actions, and then you have to act with your newly processed thoughts, emotions, and actions. That's right. Yes, and, uh, exactly. I mean that that's it. That is what the the Trinity within us is all about, and the three fold methodology to discover truth to understand it and then to act upon it exactly a very accurate uh, understanding okay thank you um the next thing um i'm jumping over to symbolism um because i always see the stars on the police cars i'm just like those stars should be pointing downward and going off of that i was watching full metal jacket a while ago and i noticed that at the very end when the soldier that goes crazy kills the mm-hmm. drill sergeant and then himself right there are two downward pointing stars yes. on the wall behind him and then as the credits start rolling, you see two broken pillars <laughs> yep. in the background amidst the fog. I, I, this is very deliberate symbolism yeah. thrown in there by Stanley Kubrick, of course, who was yep. you know, the maker of that film. Uh, his, his work is just unparalleled. Uh, if people watch Kubrick's films, you will see a whole lot of hidden occult symbology. He was obviously involved in some capacity with the dark occult. No one who made the film Eyes Wide Shut could not have had involvement with the dark occult in some capacity to understand that it operates the way it does. Um, very highly accurate rendition. My level of involvement was certainly not anywhere that high level and certainly not in, in those types of environments. Uh, it was a lot less, um, you know, elaborate and, uh, you know, in, in extraordinarily rich aspects of society as portrayed in that movie, my level of involvement was much less. So, um, but Kubrick in general portrays it accurately in that film, right. and I, I believe that's because he had direct involvement. Yep, and uh, people just seem to, they don't want to even, they're too afraid to even think that, uh, you know, these things are put in there deliberately, like I saw an episode of Smallville, mm-hmm. and two girls were turning the corner of a hospital, and then center frame in the background with a Planned Parenthood poster. And I'm like, wow. 
And I told my friends that, and he's like, do you think that's deliberate? Because stuff in movies is, you know, some of it's really random. Right. Like, yeah, maybe some of it's random, but that was definitely there on purpose. Throwing in a little nod to the eugenicists in society, huh? But, uh, and so I have three more small things. One is, um, trying, talking to my friend's fiance, actually, trying to understand and convey self-ownership, which is self-evident to me and a lot of other people. She just doesn't get it. And... I, uh, I'm still working on the rhetoric stage of working out a logical proof for it, but I'm wondering, um, just throwing it out there, if you could um, w- work on a uh, simple if-then-therefore logical proof for self-ownership, because I'm trying to work it out, and I can't find one on the Internet. So uh, it, 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 it doesn't require any kind of e- extensive intellectual debate. Either you own yourself or someone else does. And is there any legitimacy for anyone else owning anyone else? That's it. I mean, it's it's really that simple. If you can't sit down and logically see the truth of that, again, my statement is just simply, there's something fundamentally broken in the individual. They're, They're fundamentally brainwashed to a level of being broken. I don't just mean like broken, like to a point where something doesn't work anymore. Broken is also the word we use for the slavery of animals. When you put an animal into deep bondage and slavery such that their actions just immediately react to your commands, that's called breaking the animal. Yep. And that's what's been done with somebody like that. If they cannot understand self-ownership from just a simple perspective of looking at the natural world and saying... Either I am my personal owner, I own my body, my consciousness directs the actions of my body and therefore I own it, or someone else owns me. And if there is a claim of ownership against me or against anyone, it's illegitimate because that's called slavery and slavery is always illegitimate. Self-ownership doesn't need to be intellectually debated or analyzed or broken down or you come up with a proof for it. It's inherently true. It's like trying to say, please give me a total and absolute proof of gravity when I could throw a bowling ball on your foot. Yes. And there you have it. You know, her proof will come when they're taking her to a FEMA camp. Yep. That's when the proof of self-ownership will dawn upon her. We started a conversation with GMOs and stuff, and she's for the GMOs because, you know, she believes the mainstream. And I talked about eugenics a little bit, and she's like, you know, people... uh, you know, there's dumb people, and they should be sterile. I'm like, well, what if they think... It's a satanic you- ideology. It's a satanic mindset. Yeah. See, this is what I mean by... You're giving me a great, a gr- us a great example here, Zach, of someone who's trapped in what I call the ideology of, quote, mini-me Satanism. She's not a Satanist. She doesn't wouldn't even understand or be able to articulate the satanic ideology, but she ascribes to it nonetheless by what she espouses in her life. Okay, this is deep left-brained over into intellectualization, believing in eugenics, believing in the negativity of human nature, etc. These are all satanic postulates. And this person doesn't know what Satanism is, would not describe herself as a Satanist to any other living being, but nonetheless behaves and takes on the ideology of the satanic tenets. So this is what I call mini-me Satanism, in quotes, because this is the form of Satanism that the real Satanists and dark Luciferians want to propagate to the everyday man and woman to get them into a mindset where they could be easily ruled. And if, if I can, I have two more little things. Sure. One, just a little example of something I've come to realize and then just throw something out there for you to elaborate on without me needing to say anything else. Yeah, absolutely. One is, um, so I've realized... In my discussions, as, as well as with those two people, my friend and her and his fiance, and just other people in general, so many people refuse to distinguish between force and violence. They say, "Oh, it's the same thing." And right. well, you know, like I understand that there's a difference, and we eventually do get to a difference, but they don't want to just say, "Okay, there's a difference in the action and the intention and everything." So why don't we just call it different words? And I've heard people use the phrase "initiation of force." And so I kind of took that, and I was like, okay, well, if you refuse to say the initiator of force or, you know, the person using force... I would just add one word to that definition, Zach. I would say the initiation of coercive 
force. Yeah. Okay. If you are initiating coercive force against someone else who has not caused harm, that's violence. Yeah. That would be my personal definition for it. But continue.